you is sort of a, got it. Ken, what I hear from you is sort of a general, where are we at with the county's comp plan process? Uh, did I get that right? That, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, Steve, why don't we go to you? What's 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 on your mind as you come into this this evening? At our, and, and I should add, now that the recording is happening, that we are here for a county fair Q and A with the topic of the comprehensive plan update for San Juan County. And I'm just starting to go around and, and hear what's on people's minds as we um, get started. Go ahead, Steve. Thanks. Yeah, I was uh, on the city council in Edmonds and have also uh, have experienced the comprehensive plan from that perspective. And uh, also, you know, knew a lot of the folks on the planning board and certainly went to a lot of planning meetings there. And uh, I joined this meeting uh, just to try to listen to how we can um, help uh, make sure that things don't get lost in the weeds, that the major points that we want uh, in, that we want to see in the um, uh, comprehensive plan are actually there and kind of not really get worried about all of the other 5,000 pages in the plan that probably aren't gonna make any difference to anybody in the long run, even if they have to be box checked. But uh, I have, uh, I don't have a lot of confidence yet even in, in this whole process. Uh, you know, the very few priorities have emerged uh, in every meeting I've attended. Uh, it's almost been a hyper detail catch up uh, everybody in the meeting kind of asking their own research questions uh, and uh, postponing everything, uh, making very few decisions. And uh, so for me, uh, taking, for example, the climate issue, you know, there, if there are three or four major climate points I want to see, like, uh, you know, uh, uh, zone out gas stations, fuel stations, just zone them out. Uh, I look at alternatives uh, a lot more active uh, in terms of eliminating uh, greenhouse carbon sources. Between now and 2036, I mean, we really don't have that much time. So uh, I just wanted to see how, and I'm a member of uh, the Friends too, uh, so I'm happy to see you all guys. And I, I, I love Brent. I think he's the most effective uh, organizer of, uh, the, that I've seen in a long time. And uh, I just want to uh, comment that we want to make sure that our priorities are straight and we've, we put most of our energy there and not really try to motivate other people on uh, minor matters. Well, Steve, thank you for the compliment, and thank you for saying that in front of my bosses. I really appreciate that. Um, I, no, it's it's um, Steve has been attending our comp plan action team meetings as well, and um, and uh, we just had one of those last Friday, um, and so we saw each other just the other day. But um, thank you. I, let's I, you know one of the things I hear you saying in your questions is you know how do we focus on what's important and not get lost in the weeds. And, um, you know, I, I think I'll sort of turn that into a question of over the next couple months, specifically, what do we do to make sure we're not um, getting lost in the weeds and, and what's ahead of us? Um, Bruce, what about you? What's on your mind as you, as you arrive here? And you're on mute right now. I always stumble into that. Um, I'm just here for basic ed. So Steve, do you think that was a, a calculated uh, subtle or not so subtle stalling tactic on the part of the commission by uh, visiting, revisiting issues or raising questions or things of that sort? Well, like today, much to my surprise, they did unanimously recommend, and all of it, they're just recommending in the first place, which makes it all the crazier that they hem and haw so <laughs> long. Uh, but today they finally did uh, uh, agree unanimously to recommend the relatively serious caps on the vacation rentals. Oh, wow, and, really? Uh, yeah, yeah, they finally just bit the bullet on that, and they've been talking around it so long. Uh, yeah. And then, uh, 
the other things they're looking at are, are sort of admittedly technical, complicated aspects of the plan, uh, uh, annexations in the uh, urban growth areas. Um, uh, so uh, I, I think they just have difficulty absorbing all of the material. And that's what Erica Shook said in her goodbye mm. song was uh, when, when asked what she would recommend for the future of the board, she said, I wish people would sort of read up on things before they came to the meetings. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I have, I have another question. So why is my picture the only one that's fuzzy? Everybody else is nice and crisp and clean and clear and I'm fuzzy. Michelle, you know, that's, a, that's that's a different fair Q and A, Bruce. We'll have to that cover that. Exactly. In <laughs> I don't know, but I've noticed that before with your video, actually. Janet, what about you? What what station here? Janet, what uh, what brings you here? Oh, I'm totally with Steve. I I want the big picture things address climate. I want I want this plan, which is preparing us for the future, to really address what matters in our future mm -hmm. and that's the climate impacts. Yeah, thank you. And Michelle, what about you? You What what questions do you have? I you probably didn't think I was gonna put you on the spot with this, but but you know, I, what questions do you have about the comp plan? Um, this is a small group, so we can get your answers, your questions answered too, if you have some. And I don't know that I have questions right off the bat. I wanted to see, um, I wanted to see how you answered some of our member questions when they've come to me and I've referred them on or given them uh, current information. I wanted to hear the latest details from you and um, board input. So I'll, I'll raise a hand as we go along when something pops up for questioning though, if that's okay. Yeah, totally, totally. Bruce, it looks like your hand is up. No, no, uh, just, just when, it, when you finish all the introductions and everything, that's fine. I didn't We're, there. We're there. We're okay. there. What's, what's on your mind? What, 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 the vote on the cap on the vacation rentals. I've been involved in that particular controversy over the past couple of years now, it seems. So did they, have we reached the cap? Is that got a ways to go? How reasonable yeah. was it? Yeah, no, the cap was based, that they adopted was based on the current compliant uh, permit numbers. So it was pretty okay. low. Uh, but nobody else. And get yeah, it's permit. like the four, it's like the four hundred number for the county wide. Okay, all right. Is it broken right. up by island too? Yes, yes. Based on the current uh, compliant numbers, it's I I I can't remember. And actually, uh, Matt Gilbert was on the phone with me. Uh, he was um, he was doing most. He has most of the responsibility for that issue. So uh, I'm I'm pretty sure every maybe Brent. If I've said anything wrong, Brent can correct me about that. Uh, I just wanted to mention the other thing. The other thing the planning board reviewed that Brent talked about at the group last time was uh, the ground rules for the public participation in the upcoming comp plan okay. public comment period. Yeah. But but they did adopt the low. They recommended the low cap based on the reasonableness okay. of the current numbers of compliance. Wonderful. Okay. Good to hear. Yeah. I'm I'm sure the vacation rental committee was was thrilled about that. You know, um, I think the vacation rental working group, uh, to their credit, ended up being some being kind of key drivers of the communications oh, yeah. today mm -hmm. behind the scenes. Um, their proposal was the one that said, "Let's set those caps by island." at the mm -hmm. current number of vacation rental permits that are both active and compliant. And, okay, so they drove uh, that decision then. Okay, good. Yeah, and so the, the number on Orcas is 207. The number on San Juan Island is 136. The number, I don't know if you care about these actual numbers, but the number on Lopez <laughs> is 56. And of course, there's no vacation rentals allowed on Shaw. And then there are vacation rentals out in the outer islands as well. And so right now there's six of those too. So that's where the caps were set. Now what happens next, and this is interesting, and this is where we can kind of segue back into the comp plan itself, right? Because the planning commission deals with other stuff, including making recommendations on vacation rentals. Um, and, and that's, vacation rentals are touched on in the comprehensive plan, but that decision today wasn't actually part of the comp plan, 
process itself, it was sort of this side conversation that the planning commission needed to deal with in the midst of all of these comp plan discussions. So anyway, um, but quickly what happens next with that vacation rental conversation is that based on those caps, the county staff in Erica's department, Erica, who is leaving in a week or two, um, in the De Department of Community Development, create draft legislation that 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 states here's the caps you know here's the rule then a public hearing has to happen legally for the planning commission to hear public input on those caps um interestingly okay i, I don't want to go too down i don't know maybe you guys care about this vacation rental stuff we could talk about this well, it's night, a big I'm, issue I'm yeah. of time, right um the the planning commission will have a hearing about it the county council will have a hearing about it and then the county council will decide we've gotten all this public input are we going to keep are, is the county council going to approve this recommendation for a cap of 405 that's that's next steps and that happens over the next couple of months i guess yeah bruce just a follow-on question how did how did shaw get away from outlawing vacation rentals on that island <laughs> It was a resolution by county council, right? Like, like oh, okay. the shop people got together and said, hey, we don't want this. County council said, sounds good. Let's make it a resolution. And there it was. Janet. Same on Walgreens. Follow on item if I could. Um, is let, there let, any... Wait, 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 wait. Let, let Janet yeah, weigh in because she's been patient. Ahead, <laughs> Thanks. Yep. So it would affect the comp plan if um, they separated short-term vacation rentals where the owner was on the property and called those whatever um, if from the ones where the owners aren't on the property, which would be businesses and the others would be, what did Michael Durland suggest? Homestay or something. He had a name. Uh, yeah, they, they, they're effectively um, regulated as bed. Well, actually this isn't quite what you're saying because Never mind. I was thinking of something different. Um, but yeah, no, I I totally agree. There are okay. So let's back up. And and Bruce, if it's okay with you, I'm going to kind of move on to general comp plan stuff. But but ask your question quick. Let's. But let me get to the comp plan stuff. Go ahead. And you're still on mute. Bruce, you're on mute. Bruce, you're on mute. It makes it easier to answer the question if I can't hear it though. Is it, was there any discussion about any local ordinances that could be enacted based on the uh, vacation rental caps? For example, HOAs, could they adopt their own cap? Uh, they can and they do. And in fact, I live in an HOA that does not allow vacation rentals. Um, okay. And yeah, so that, that is definitely allowed and, and, and is a rule that is pretty common, in fact. Um, the so they want to enforce it. Mm -hmm. uh, the county will not enforce it. That's correct. So the HOAs need to enforce it themselves. Yes. Right. Right. <laughs> or through like, um, you know, uh, pitchforks and torches. I guess I don't know. Yeah, how they exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. So so let me let me um, you know Bruce for your benefit, Ken for your benefit, Michelle perhaps this is this will be helpful for you too. I don't know. You probably have been following comp plan since I talk about it all the time. But anyway. So, so our comp plan, our comprehensive plan in San Juan County gets updated every eight years, right? And um, you probably know enough about it to know that the, the purpose of the comprehensive plan is to set goals and policies, to recommend goals and policies for our county in a number of different areas, right? Housing, transportation, energy, land use, like there's these different what they call elements of the comp plan. And so the idea is that you have a comp plan that uses a 20 year planning horizon. So for instance, when they're looking at housing, they're looking at population projections that go out 20 years, right? And they're saying, okay, um, given the current housing and what we expect 20 years from now, what policies, what goals and policies need to be put in place to make sure that our housing stock expands, that development happens in a way that allows for that growth, right? And so I'm just going to pause there for a second, because that's a really important distinction, that the comprehensive plan is built on the assumption of growth. 
And that's something that a lot of our of people in our community actually, it kind of gives them pause, right? Like, because I think there's a lot of people here that want to say, no, wait a second, do we even want that growth? Right. right? Um, do we want tourism to expand that much? And, and how do we talk about that? And, and that is actually kind of a limitation of the comp plan process, because legally it is built on the state uh, law called the Growth Management Act, and and you know, can you know all this stuff if you dealt with it in King County? But you know, the the assumption is you're gonna grow, plan for it smart, you know, smartly, thoughtfully, plan for it, right? And so that's what the comp plan is. And and our county, different counties work on different timelines, but our county is supposed to update the comp plan every eight years. <clears throat> our current update has been going for at least five. So we're already due for another update in 2025 and they haven't even finished the one for 2017 or whatever it was yet, um, which is, you know, that's a whole nother conversation, but it, well, actually it's not because it gets back to what Steve was saying, right? And like, you know, I'm sitting through these meetings and they're just endless. And what are we talking about? And we're getting so lost in the weeds. And another thing that happens is that because this process at, in San Juan County has been going for so long, we have people on the planning commission who have no idea what was talked about three years ago when the county, for instance, was talking about the housing element of the comp plan update process, right? And so I think that was Erica's point, right? Because all these you know, planning commissioners are going, well, we need to talk about housing. How come we haven't talked about housing yet? Where from Erica's perspective, they went through the grinder on housing already, but now they got to go through it again because the, the planning commissioners are new, you know, new being within the last three years, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's really like it is it's a it's a difficult difficult um, process, and 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 here's where I also want to give the planning commissioners some credit because these people are volunteers, right? And there's nine of them, I think. Uh, maybe wrong about that number. It's around that. And, you know, Bruce, you were saying uh, earlier, hey, you know, are they deliberately stalling? What's what's going on here? I don't think they are. I really do believe in the good intentions of the people that are in that room. Now, I don't always agree with the the values that they're bringing to the conversation, right? Like, I don't I don't always see eye to eye on how they're making their decisions and, and the stuff that they're basing those on. But I, I really do believe that all of those people are there because they're trying to do for what for them is the right thing. Um, and I think that's true of the county staff as well. Boy, I tell you what, I, I'm surprised that, that someone who's director of that community development department lasts longer than a year. I mean, I can't imagine how hard that job must be and how overworked they are. Like, it is just crazy. Like, this is a small county and the people who are there are really, really stretched thin. Um, so I just, I, you know, kudos to the, the county staff and the planning commissioners and Steve, go ahead. Yeah, just on that point, I, I kind of disagree with maybe your literary illusion there. I mean, I can easily imagine a planning director that's competent, that knows what they're aiming for, that presents uh, these materials uh, to the Commission. I mean, I I understand. I mean, once it gets to the commission, I don't know what they can do, but I, I think uh, I think it's quite possible that a active, enthusiastic director can bring all of these modules in a fairly compact, efficient way. I can imagine that. You, you may be right, and I think one of the things we have to watch out for because new, someone new's coming in, right? Um, and maybe they'll bring exactly that perspective with them. We'll see. With, with them, excuse me, but you know, one of the real dangers here is that because it is so difficult and because it's so complicated that, that there's this sort of like, um, there's this incentive to just sort of get it done, right? And sometimes that means not taking the time to really think through the issues. Um, and, it, and it's this hard balance, right? Because we get mad at the planning commission for getting lost in the weeds, but at the same time, you know, 
I get frustrated because I submitted comments on the thing they're talking about and they're not even talking about what, what I submitted, right? Like I want them to have even more conversation because I want them to talk about this really good point I was making, right? <laughs> you know, so, um, you know, at, at, on one hand, I totally agree. Not, not definitely. There's some times, man, when those conversations just go round and round in circles. Um, and that just drives me batty. It really does, right? I mean, you know, it probably drives them batty as well. But um, you know, I, I, uh, I, I don't, I don't disagree with you, Steve. That um, part of how the process is managed by county staff gives us the result that we currently have, right? And I think that was your point, right? Like, if, if maybe there are different approaches to this that could help this move faster. Um, and I, I think that's a really good point. Yeah, Janet. I once asked Erica Schick, this was a few years ago, what is it that um, sort of attracts people to be 50% in the growth areas and 50% in the rural areas? And she said, sidewalks and streets. That's it. Anyway, um, it's all sort of, hand waving in some ways. Yes, Kenny. Yeah, Ken. Yeah, so um, uh, we're not acting independently here. There's a, supposed to be a, a carrot and a stick from the state of Washington, uh, from the Department of Commerce, I believe, who oversees the comprehensive plan. And uh, I was just looking to see what those carrots and sticks would be, but uh, there are some consequences to a jurisdiction if they do not uh, update their comprehensive plan in a timely manner. And I wonder if the San Juan County uh, Commission or Planning Commission or County Council is aware of that flaw. I'm sure they're aware of that, but how are they dealing with that? Well, let me give you an example. Um, so one of the issues before the planning commission that's gotten a lot of attention in our community is this quote build out analysis unquote that was proposed by joe simons and and by the island stewards and 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 supported by a lot of people right and the idea there is let's do a super deep and thorough analysis of what growth patterns of x now whether or not you buy into Joe's really astronomical growth project projections or not, the, 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 the real question is, if our county doubles in size, if our county, you know, you know, increases by X, um, what's the impact on our quality of life? What's the impact on water? What's the impact on, you know, fire departments? What's the, right? Like, what are the impacts of that? And that's the build out analysis. Now, that is a big project. Right, that is a, a research project with a lot of data and a lot of research and you know surveys and all kinds of crap. And that takes a lot of time. And so there was a ton of public support for that, right? We gotta do that. Like that's, that's what the planning commission was hearing. We gotta do that, we gotta do that. And so they said, county staff, we gotta do this. And county staff said, okay, you know, we've got whatever it is, four of us that are our work that could work on that. And it would take us about two years. So do you want us to stop moving forward with our comprehensive plan work and just do this build out analysis? Because we could, but if we're much later on our comprehensive plan update, we're gonna start missing out on grants and that's the stick. We're gonna start missing out on opportunities for funding for our county because we're dragging out this comp plan, comp plan process for so long. Now, would there maybe be other options, like you hire someone from the outside to do it or something like that, right? Like there was, there was more conversation to have there. And I, I think at the end of the day, the county staff just didn't want to do this, right? So they were sort of saying, um, you know, they're kind of given the worst case scenario about trying to do this build out analysis. But you know, the, the core of that point is valid, right? Which is, is a ton of work. And if, you know, I, I can choose to do this or I can choose to do that. You want me to work on the comp plan or you want me to work on this build out analysis, but you know, I can't, I can't do everything because we're a small department and we're understaffed. Um, 
So that's that's an example of how that came into the conversation recently. I think county staff is aware of that. I think planning commission is aware of that as well. Yeah, Janet, you had a visual aid. It doesn't have to be precise. You can have a ballpark analysis, which I did several years ago. This was 16,000 current county population, peak season doubles to 32,000, 80,000 approximate build out population and 160,000 peak season at build out. You can imagine. <laughs> That's pretty big. You know, I, I was, I was my, my son recently traveled with um, family to Aruba and Aruba is an island. I don't know if you know it. It's, it's sort of at the north end of South America there. Anyway, Aruba is only a little bit larger than San Juan Island, and the population is 115,000 people. Can you imagine 115,000 people on San Juan Island? Like, you know, holy cow. Anyway, it's that <laughs> reminded me of that. All right. Um, so I was talking a little bit about what the comp plan is. Let me talk a little bit about where it's at. I've, told, I've mentioned the fact that it's just dragging out. It's taking forever. Now, happily, the way the process works is that the Planning Commission works through in great painful detail each one of these sections of the comp plan, right? They dig through the transportation element. They dig through the energy element. They make all these recommendations. Uh, you know, they say, okay, well, this goal and policy should have the word shall instead of should and this one over here should add something about climate change and da, 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 da. you know then they argue about every single one so so once the draft of the whole thing is done there's this phase of public input and that is actually what we are about to start over the next couple of months because that's when the county goes to the public and says okay people people of san juan county we got ourselves a draft of a new comprehensive plan. What do you think? And so there is a series starting in October, and it's going to be October, November, December. There's this series of events that's going to happen where the public gets to weigh in on different parts of the comprehensive plan. And um, there are um, the, the, uh, the topics of those town halls, they're, they're, the format of them is a town hall, virtual town halls. The topics of those town halls are based on what the planning commission has heard the most about and or what they think there's gonna be the most controversy about. So for instance, there's always a lot of controversy. Part of the comp plan might be, um, or, or I should say part of the comp plan is map changes and it's part of the land use piece of the comp plan. So a map change might be this parcel over here was zoned as a forest resource land and now we're going to zone it as rural farm forest, you know, and George owns that piece of land. And that uh, generates a lot of controversy, right? Because if you've got a neighbor who's saying, I don't want them to be able to develop a bunch of stuff there, they're going to get up in arms. Um, the Egg Lake Quarry is actually a really good example of this on San Juan Island because they've got neighbors who are totally upset with them right now because they feel like the quarry is infringing on their neighborhood character. There's noise, there's disruption, there's all this stuff. And the county's land use decision-making includes putting in place what's called a mineral resource lands overlay for some of those uh, parcels where the Egg Lake Quarry operates. Um, so for, that's an example of when the county has their town hall about land use on San Juan Island, all of those neighbors of the Egg Lake Quarry are going to show up, I guarantee it. And they're going to have stuff to say and they're going to, you know, you know what I mean? Like, like the, the land, the map changes tend to be really emotional and people show up for that stuff. And rightly so, right? Like, you know, you got an, a quarry next to you that's make a noise at all hours or whatever, you know, that's, that's something that they'll get upset about. Um, the other town halls that are happening, there, so there's three about the map changes, San Juan Island, Orcas Island, and then sort of Lopez and Shaw combined. So there's three town halls on that. There's a town hall on the um, housing element, which is going to include some vacation rental issues in it. 
to the extent that that is touched by the comp plan. And then there's the um, the climate town hall, which is which is interesting because for the first time, our new comprehensive update is going to have a climate section in it. Now there's climate pieces sort of spread throughout the whole thing, right? Like you know making housing energy efficient, stuff like that, right? That might appear in the housing element. There's actually going to be a climate section. And the planning commission wants more public feedback specifically on that climate section. So, and Janet, I see your hand. Let me finish this last little thought. And Steve, I see your hand too. Give me just let me finish this thought. That's what that's where Friends comes in, right? Friends of the San Juans comes in to help mobilize people to talk and, and express their feelings and their vision and their values and their hopes and dreams about climate for San Juan County, right? Our role can be, hey, people, there's a town hall happening about climate in our comp plan. Here's the things that we see is really important for the planning commissioners to hear from you. You know, we need you know to protect natural areas for carbon sequestration, blah, 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 right? All that stuff. And we can help people know that it's happening, but then also advocate for those climate values. Okay, sorry, I, I, I had to get that out of my system. Go ahead, Janet, and then Steve, your hand was up as well. I, I wanted to say that Friends of the San Juans wrote a fantastic commentary about the egg flake, egg flake quarry and how the county had just skipped over their own required procedures. And so if the residents there want to stop it, they have lots of ammunition and they should read the Friends of the San Juans comments. And, and we've reached out to them. Uh, both Level and I have, re have have had some correspondence with folks in that egg leg quarry community about what's going on there. Yeah, Steve. Uh, it may be a quibble, but I don't believe there is a climate change section in the comp plan. Uh, the decision was made about a year or two ago, or in spite of the enthusiastic support at the uh, town halls three years ago during the vision process, uh, they're going to intersperse the climate issues throughout the specific sections. Uh, even if there might arguably be some kind of climate paragraph in the introduction or something like that, there's no climate element of the comp plan. The, Steve, they actually ended up deciding to do both. And I can send you the draft of that climate language. It's going to be, oh, you're on mute. Okay. Yeah. 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 They, Sorry, I didn't know that. When was that? Yeah, um, it is going to be within the land use element of the comp plan, the land use chapter. And um, they discussed it at the I don't know, February or March meeting or something like that. And then they didn't finish because they were like, hey, we need more public input on this. And so they sort of tabled it, awaiting this public engagement phase so that they could get more input on it. So um, I'll make a note to myself to send it to you. It's not that long, right? It's it's pretty short, but there is some climate language that they are adding for the first time within that land use piece. Now, and it's interspersed throughout, right? I, I yeah. Anyway, all right. Yes, I, I remember. I remember what you are referring to the draft that the the planner uh, offered during that meeting. Uh, that uh, they all uh, got all mixed up with and they said, well, yeah, yeah, uh, right. We'll see where that goes. Thank you. You're right. Yeah, yeah, totally. I, and, and to their credit, actually, I, I liked a lot of the language that was in that section. Um, I thought they were on the right track. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm giving a sense of where we're at in the comp plan. And there's one last thing I'd like to say on that. And then Ken, I'd like to know, and Bruce, I'd like to know kind of whether I've answered your questions about sort of where we're at and what's going on. The planning commission only makes recommendations. Mm -hmm. It's the county council that has the final decision on what actually is in the comp plan. So as much as we, you know, um, spend our time and energy engaging with the planning commission, we're going to have to keep this up, keep the energy up, keep the enthusiasm up, keep the engagement up, because we need to also convince the county council members that what's happening or what's coming out of the planning commission is what they should adopt too, or not, 
right? There's definitely some places where the planning commission has not done things that Friends of the San Juans really feels like they should. And so it's time for us to advocate at the county council level and say, all right, county council, you heard all of these people show up to the town hall about housing, um, which we got there, right? We're gonna get them all to go. Um, you heard all these people speaking on housing um, and the planning commission is saying this, and here's our science-based, legal-based, you know, whatever comments on this issue. You got to do this, right? And so it's up to us to then advocate at the county council level for those changes or those recommendations or whatever. Um, so it's so the work is far from over. And in fact, some of the most important parts of it are happening now. We'll see, right? I mean, I, I was like level and level. I'm referring to level Pratt on our staff, right? Level, is the county council really going to go through this line by line? Because Level was a former county council member, right? And she goes, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, really? The county council is going to go through this whole thing, too? And like, oh, yeah. Like, you know, you can expect even more. Um, Steve, you're putting a link in for the, for the draft of the climate change goals. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, Janet, what's on your mind? Um, my friend, uh, Sheila Gaikman. Mm -hmm who's on the planning commission sent me an email four hours ago. November 3rd is the town hall on climate, 5.30 to 7.30. Yeah, yeah. And um, the, yeah, I mean, I guess I, 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 what, I didn't, I haven't sent that schedule out. Although now that I'm thinking about today's planning commission discussion, I guess that's, set in stone. I, I wasn't sure whether that was sort of like a tentative schedule and whether those dates were uh, needed to get confirmed or something, but I guess they did get confirmed today because they didn't change them. Um, so anyway, as far as I know, those are happening. So yeah, it's November 3rd is climate, November 10th is housing. I'm doing this from memory, so it's probably wrong. Um, and then the next three Wednesday evenings are the map change town halls for San Juan, Orcas, and Lopez. I'm not sure about the order there. Um, so, so Ken, let me ask you, um, I've been talking a little bit about sort of where we're at in the process. What, what questions are coming to mind for you uh, for, at this point? Uh, I don't have any specific questions. Uh, I really look forward to those town meetings, uh, to the town halls, mm -hmm. especially regarding climate. Um, I, I've been, I've had to triage my time a little bit. So uh, this has been a pretty low priority, you know, in my mind, but I need to come back up to speed. So I really appreciate this and definitely the town halls I'll be involved with. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll be getting that information out. I mean, our, if nothing else, you'll, you'll get it in our newsletter, right? We're going to be publishing the list of dates in our September, um, High Watermarks newsletter when it comes out, which will be in three weeks, I think. Um, and Bruce, how about you? You were asking for sort of a, a background on where are we at, what's going on with this thing. How, it, what, what questions are still in your mind? Well, no, the overall discussion really meets my goal. Um, I do have a question about the town halls, though. Is that going to be blasted out to the entire membership? Yes. Okay, and it'll be on our website as well, I assume. Mm. It should be. I haven't thought about that yet, but yes, it, 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 yes, it will be. <laughs> okay. yeah. For okay. sure. No, that, that was the only question I had based on this last discussion or uh, enlightenment. Uh, but other than that, it's been very educational. Yeah. Okay, Appreciate good. It. Janet, uh, your hand is up. I wanted to ask a general question about county meetings. Um, they're supposed to be advertised ahead of time by law. And the county council meetings rarely have an agenda or documents like they used to. Ahead of time, you, you have to ask the clerk to send them to you. Yeah. <laughs> and and I, I, I don't think that's legal. I think there's, it's violating some state law. You know, um, the, uh, uh, I can't speak to the legality of it, right? I'm not a lawyer, but my guess is that there is a note that comes out in some obscure little corner of the you know <laughs> sounder that has the upcoming council thing in it right i know i'm on the i'm on the email list 
of, of that you know press release or whatever yeah janet is that not right is that not true well, it might be true somewhere but i asked tina whitman our science director today about this and she says she has to ask the clerks to send her the information she can't find it on the website either um for the county council specifically yeah yeah or the planning commission man i tell you what well you you you've you've um You've definitely mentioned how difficult it is to use that county website before. It's it's a mess. You know, it's and it, you know, apparently it's better than it used to be, but no. No. Well, no. I, some parts of it are maybe. I don't know. I know that years ago, before the AV capture era, it was great. They had links, you get them in your email if you wanted, and all the documents were active links. It was terrific <laughs> compared <laughs> to today. I just irritates me to no end. Yeah, totally. Um, so where do we go from here in this conversation? Um, yeah, Bruce and, so and Janet, Michelle, I'm going to ask you if you have a question you as well. About, yeah, uh, Janet, are you talking about the documents themselves or the notice of, of meetings? Both. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I seem to remember that um, for, the, for the very limited time I had to uh, participate in some of that I had to get the documents from the clerk but the meeting meeting notices themselves I think come out like on the Friday before the Monday well, or Tuesday well, meeting I yeah. timing, but, <laughs> yeah. and, and I will I will give the staff of DCD some credit for the planning commission agendas because they're supposed to be released two weeks before the planning commission meetings and they're actually I have yet to see them not do that um they are they they're pretty prompt about getting their agendas out two weeks ahead of time and and they'll have their staff report for you to look at two weeks ahead of time the one they'll yeah. be talking about and yeah planning that. commission so. is good but the county council is the pips <laughs> well, that's probably a whole nother county fair q a on that um michelle how are you doing have you thought of questions to ask or are you are you feeling good i'm feeling good informed i was just watching bruce put his hand up and make sure you caught it so oh uh, no i was scratching my head <laughs> okay I didn't, I didn't have a question um so you know where do we go from here right um something that i've been doing for the last four months and janet you've been at some of these meetings steve you've been at a bunch of them um is creating this comp plan action team and the idea is to gather people from the community. Um, they may be members of friends, they may not be, they may agree with friends, they may not agree with me, but, but gather people together who want to engage in this process. And once a month we get together and we say, okay, here's what's on the agenda of the planning commission this month. Let's talk about this stuff. Um, you know, and it I think has been helpful for folks to a get some help sorting through all of the piles of information right like it's hard it's hard to know what is the planning commission talking about next and and you know oh my gosh the staff report was 83 pages long i can't make heads or tails of this you know what what's important you know what are we what should i be saying what should i care about and and behind the scenes at friends of the san juans I'm having weekly meetings. I've been having weekly meetings with Lovell, Pratt, a Marine, a Marine a Policy Protection Director, who, you know, is a former Planning Commissioner, former County, former County Council member. And this is not her job at all, but she's so smart that I'm making her do it with me anyway. <laughs> um, and Tina Whitman, who has been dealing with land use stuff for 20 years, right? Um, and then we brought in. Kyle Loring, who's the former staff attorney at Friends of the San Juans, and we meet weekly. We talk about, okay, well, what's coming up and what's on the agenda for the planning commission and what, you know, Brent, when you meet with these comp plan action team people, have them say this, you know, and have them write letters about that. Um, it's been super helpful. Um, you know, I want to point out, especially to you board members, that like, this is not something that the executive director would typically be spending a lot of time on. We're short staffed right now. We don't have that staff attorney legal director position. And this is this 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 falls squarely within their bailiwick. And so, you know, Lovell and Tina and I are all sort of 
um, you know, pinch hitting in there to, to try to cover this because it's really important. And it's important that friends be engaged in this. Um, even if it means that some of the other things, you know, we don't, we're not, we're not doing as well because we're spending time on this, you know, you got to make choices. And I want, I want people to still be able to go home at five o'clock every day today, notwithstanding, of course. Um, but I, uh, I get, I guess where I was going with that is that there's more, right? Like that, you know, we are kind of doing our best to keep up with this. And just as an example, today, the planning commission was looking at proposals from the Deer Harbor planning committee about changes to some of the land use in Deer Harbor itself. They were looking at, um, some proposals from the Lopez Planning Committee, the Lopez Village Planning Committee, about changes in land use in that area. And we didn't look at them. You know, we didn't have a chance to, to do that um, because there's just so much information that it's hard to keep up with at all, especially when you're short staffed like we are. And I, um, yeah, go ahead, Janet. I've read the Deer Harbor proposed changes and I approve of them. I went to the local meetings and um, they're really good. They're going to ban short-term vacation rentals in residential zoned areas of the Hamlet. Yeah, yeah, that's great. I mean, I, it's really good to know that there there are people who are paying attention to that one and staying engaged with it, right? Um, for us, the way we approach it is is you know because we have to make choices. We sort of have to pick our battles about what we're engaging on because we can't you know, do the legal research on every single one of the things that comes before the planning commission. And, and that's us, right? Like I'm staffed up and I've got a team and I'm like going for it. I can't even imagine for those individual planning commissioners, like how they're keeping up with this stuff and how they're understanding the issues. And, and I think we need to sort of recognize that in some cases they're not, and they're doing the best they can, um, but there's too much. You know, and so I, I think for some of them, they really rely on what friends is saying, or is, I like to think they do, um, you know, that, that we're providing this pretty valuable service to them as planning commissioners to help them think through some of these issues. Um, so so I, I hope that's true. Um, yeah, Michelle. So I do have a question. I'd like to find out, um, Steve, I think that you're out in Olga. Is there a group out in Olga that is doing, you know, the footwork like we're hearing from Janet? Um, not on uh, this side, uh, not that I know of. Uh, well, yes and no. Uh, there's certainly the, the Lopez uh, Island. Uh, I mean, I, I think both friends and uh, Joe Simon's group, the vacation rental work group or whatever it was, and the loosely affiliated Lopez group, all of the motivated, you know, five or 10 uh, people at most of these meetings to make comments in addition to all their written comments. So I think, I think those three groups, the Friends, through its organization that Brent was doing, and uh, the work group, uh, and the, or, you know, the industry group, you know, there were a lot of them that were organized too uh, on the other side. And, but, and the Lopez group that uh, had been sort of active or inactive on the, on the uh, more uh, environmental uh, uh, general uh, issues uh, really were, could, I mean, it was seven to nothing. I mean, uh, so many of those people went along with it in the end. I think primarily because uh, one of the last speakers, you know, it was like uh, kind of, I forget what it was, but she said, you know, on the one hand, you it's not emotional or what a lot of people said it was emotional, but others said, you know, they identified all of these pro environmental benefits from these limits. And on the other is the money, you know, and uh, that kind of, I thought that was a kind of a moment there. And, uh, you know, it was like a house of cards sort of, they all caved over. It's only a recommendation anyway, and it's an interim thing. And they're coming back next time with a proposed ordinance for lengthy review by the planning before board before it even gets going further. So, um, uh, it was a very effective, public engagement activity, I thought, because I'm not sure how successful people thought it would be in the beginning. I mean, 
it was kind of desperate, but I, I was surprised in the end myself because, you know, there was so much uh, discussion. Uh, you know, there were a lot of challenging arguments politically. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that was interesting today about that vacation rental conversation, I, we're, we're coming full circle, right? We're coming all the way back around to the vacation rental conversation. One of the things that was interesting today is that um, some of the groups that have been pretty organized about supporting the growth of vacation rentals um, weren't there. Like they didn't show up today. And um, I was surprised. I was surprised they didn't, they didn't send all their people, right, to make comments and so on. There were a couple of people there speaking out in, in opposition to CAPS and that kind of stuff, but certainly nothing like we saw at the, um, there was a hearing on vacation rentals a month or two back. And um, I think when this proposal, this proposed ordinance has a public hearing from the planning commission and the county council, I, I, my guess is that we're gonna get a lot more voices opposed to it showing up um, and they just weren't there today. So anyway, it's, it's interesting because it's like, okay, well, that's how the decision got made, right? Like it was who showed up. It was who was in the room. I think that really carries some weight, and it and it and it gives us, um, you know, it gives us some uh, power in our, our in our thinking that that's how we make change, right? Is we can get people to show up like that really makes a difference, and it does. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I, um, Jen, I think you had your hand up first, and then Bruce, and then we we've got to wrap up after that. Yeah, I wanted to say, I think um, the word community has become really powerful. Um, and that's part of what's been going on with the vacation rental um, controversy. Mm -hmm. whole, whole communities have felt impacted um, as opposed to just people who say it's a, an economic driver. And I, I really think separating the rentals where the owner is on the property is a reasonable thing to do because a lot of people say I depend on this for my you know being able to live here they could continue to do that um, if there was a separation yeah in the regulation and the planning commission definitely acknowledged today that there's a lot more tools in the toolbox than just caps Right, there's a lot more to talk about here. Yeah, Bruce. Yeah, did did uh, did this group um, or this decision address any legal designation for people who take advantage of vacation rentals versus are they a, a, a tenant or a guest? There's been some legal brouhaha's about that, and I was just wondering if if the uh, if the if the council determined uh, did any definitional work around that. They didn't today, um, okay. and and I don't I don't know the ins and outs of that, Bruce. I mean, I know that that's a, a good question to ask, but I don't have enough background on that specifically to say much about that. Um, but there's all kinds of, I mean, you know, Janet mentioned the idea of hey, does the owner live locally or not? Um, there's another, um, you know, if if you're actually Airbnb. -ing, vacation doing a vacation rental for a room in your house when you're there that is a different permitting process it's it's like uh you know that's an that's an that's a um a b and b as opposed yeah. to an airbnb <laughs> all right um, you know there's there's like uh there's all kinds of kind of variations on this yeah it's um, the definitional issues that I, I was most interested in if they address that at all yeah. okay I understand. not today okay. not today so thank you. It is 631. I want to be respectful of everyone's time. Um, you know, thank you for joining on a Friday night to learn about the county's comprehensive plan. I mean, I, I, I geek out on this stuff, right? So I enjoy the conversations like this, but thank you for being part of it. And, um, you know, I, 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 I look forward to this next phase this public engagement phase of the comp plan update process, because I think there's a lot of opportunity for, um, you know, the planning commission and the county council to make really good choices for our islands moving forward. And 
and and and we're here friends of the san juans is here these other groups are here to to help them do it right and to help them have the information they need to make good decisions um so anyway thank you so much and uh if any of you have any questions you know how to find me um if there's questions about what's going on or what's coming up uh just let me know yeah th thanks a lot brent for yeah thank you everybody yeah thanks brent take care